what's with you guys and welcome on another episode today how are you guys doing i hope you all are doing great and if you are joining for the very first time thank you so much for tuning in i came across this white creators video and she's saying nothing but the fact because we have seen this play out in some celebrities life especially the ones in relationship that we see so much online this lady talked about how beautiful black woman with a white man will always trigger a white woman's main character syndrome and i know i want you to start thinking of the celebrities that comes to head when you hear about main character syndrome i saw so many comments of people mentioning megan marco and i know they are so right and i think the most recent one is the nicole situation this lady literally put her own people on the hot seat used their own words for them and tell them to sit down and let's actually digest this i'm going to roll the clip now so let's hear what this lady has to say seeing a beautiful black woman with a white man will almost certainly trigger a white woman's main character syndrome every time if you're a white woman that follows me right now you better not be getting that thumb ready to scroll please because that was embarrassing what happened on that other video don't do that stay and listen like you would want a man to stay and listen when i talk shit about men be the change you want to see in the world okay now you may have heard me talk about main character syndrome in men which is the idea that they are the main character and that everybody else around them fits into that narrative somehow either as the sidekick either as the villain the mentor etc and when you are raised in a hierarchy especially again a hierarchy that involves race as explicitly as the american hierarchy involves it it's turtles all the way down it's the same thing all the way down while white men definitely do have the most amount and like the most egregious case of main character syndrome everybody who participates in the american hierarchy in the american caste system all of these behaviors and actions like they trickle all the way down yes white men have like this very intense main character syndrome but white women have also been given a very specific narrative about their place in that situation and so they also have main character syndrome that's where when a white man marries a black woman it triggers white women's narrative it triggers the narrative that that something was taken from them because their whole life they grew up watching white disney princesses end up with a white disney prince so that's how it goes that's how you play the game right you take this doll and this doll and they go together and that's how you play the game what's triggered is that you are not supposed to be part of that narrative in any way as a black woman you are not supposed to reap the benefits of being this close to the top of the hierarchy right it's almost like they see it in their eyes as like you've skipped a few steps on the ladder and you've ended up like you know in a place that they could have gotten it's kind of like that problem that white people have with affirmative action right it's like well what if there was a white person that was qualified to take that spot and you just took it from them like don't you feel bad and this is why affirmative action is needed because people think like that like you just told on yourself very loudly but that's what it is they are also confused because a white man isn't supposed to want a black woman like a white man is also supposed to be trained to want a white woman to want the like the aesthetic right of a white woman and just for everybody wondering how i know these things it's it's education yes some of it is observation but it's reading books by black educators but especially black women i do audible a lot like i actually have read a lot more than this but i do a lot of audible so i'll just screenshot some recommendations for any other white people uh, wanting to get educated um, you can know these things in your heart you can know things are wrong in your heart but to actually be able to educate others or like put words to these things that actually like make sense you have to listen to black women especially because they have all the nuance okay all the nuance is there this is from me and white supremacy by Layla f Saad. And she says black women around the world experience this white gaze lens of being seen as angry strong aggressive and wild as well as being believed to be lesser in intelligence and beauty than other women. They are seen as either the aggressive adversary, the sassy sidekick, or the deferent devotee to white women. So of course a white woman is triggered and confused when you are chosen by a white man who was supposed to be the prince to her princess in her fairy tale, right? Like it immediately makes sense. She's like, how can you like this aggressive and wild, angry and strong woman when I was taught my whole life that to get a man, I have to be all the opposite of these things. Obviously, the black woman can be whatever she is. Like, she's not obviously automatically angry or wild or any of these things. You don't know that. But in your mind as a white woman, that's what you assume because these stereotypes have been so readily fed to you. And not only that, but you have been taught to be the opposite of these stereotypes so to a white man it should have been a no-brainer based on the stereotypes 
And at the end of the day, what's upsetting, again, is that they have worked really hard for this certain thing that was pretty much supposed to be all but guaranteed to be theirs. And, and here comes somebody basically cutting in line. You are never supposed to surpass them on the ladder up to the top because white women are supposed to get the opportunity first. Not only that, but a white man is never supposed to pick a black woman. You know, that's why so many white women are such pick me's because they were literally taught that men will pick you if you do certain things. And they actually put stock into that and grew up training themselves to do these things, to be unproblematic, to be very easygoing, keep sweet, pray and obey, whatever, right? Now they're surprised because their expectations have been subverted, right? It's that because whiteness comes from a lack mentality, it's that liking anything about a black woman is automatically an insult to a white woman. A crazy way to think, obviously, but nevertheless, it happens. And the emulation stems from kind of the exact same place of white women have always been told that they are the beauty standard. It was like Marilyn Monroe, like if the sex symbol was always, always, always a white woman. But once the capitalists figured out they could exploit black women for that too, they were like, oh great, we'll just do that. Right? Nobody thought about how that would affect the white women who have always been told that them being the highest standard of beauty is safe. It's safe and sound. Like no black woman will ever be considered as beautiful as like a mediocre looking white woman. Those days were past, right? All of a sudden. And all of a sudden they started being like, oh wait, there's something I'm missing out on. And it's this whole like, that should have been me. That should have been me and not you. Basically that idea, right? And there's also what's hard coded into capitalism, which is basically you either compete or you get left behind. So that's why all the Kardashian sisters went and got everything done like the way that they did. Because black women can be sex symbols now too. And white women raced, right? So they said, oh, so if these are the features that men want, then I will give them that. Me, a white woman. That's basically where I think that comes from. This part is for the white women that are, I trust, better still be here. Why do you need to look at anti-blackness against black women? It is my belief that the rising and empowerment of black women is one of the biggest threats to white supremacy. Knowing this, white supremacy works particularly hard to stifle, undermine, marginalize, demonize, and harm black women. All anti-blackness, regardless of who it is directed at, paints black people as inferior in all ways, except the ways that can be used by non-black people for non-black gain. When it comes to black women, this treatment is compounded by the added marginalization faced under sexism. From negative stereotypes that trap black women in a one-dimensional imagination to the way that black women's bodies have been treated less like the bodies of human beings and more like the bodies of animals. Anti-blackness against black women is killing black women, both physically and psychologically. So if you call yourself a feminist, you want to call yourself a feminist, you want to rah-rah under my videos where I talk shit about men, but you don't want to look at this, you don't want to look at anti-blackness against black women, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. You're no better than Susan B. Anthony and her little minions that when they were given their rights, they took them and ran with them. And they left the black women that worked with, that protested with, that marched with, did everything with. These white women left them in the dust to fend for themselves. They took their rights and they ran. And I'll be damned if anybody following me thinks it's gonna be like that. It's not gonna be like that, if I can help it. That's embarrassing. That's a shameful moment in American history and in American women's history, especially. How you are in relationships with and to black women speaks volumes about where you are in your anti-racism journey. Do you feel like you cannot relate to black women? Do you covet black women's physical attributes yet secretly feel disdain for them as human beings. Do you assume black women are less educated, less affluent, and less capable than you? These are just some signs that you harbor anti-blackness against black women. This anti-blackness needs to be excavated, confronted, and owned in order for you to practice anti-racism. So let's get to work. It's something that we all have to continuously practice and reflect on, myself included. Well, I may be from Ukraine, but America will definitely do a number on you. Like I said, it really forces you into this hierarchy, whether you want to be part of it or not. You cannot just go with the flow. You have to actively fight back against it. That's what people mean when they say, like, you need to educate yourself. They don't mean you're a horrible racist and you need to blah, blah, blah. What people mean when they say you need to get educated is you need to start swimming upstream. You need to stop going with the flow and you need to use your muscles to head upstream because upstream is the only way to solve all of these problems. You need to go as far upstream as you can. 
So if you want to abolish one system of power, you have to go upstream and abolish them all. And the only way to do that is to get educated because otherwise people, this world literally tells you, this country especially, but this world tells you in so many ways that it's okay to be racist. It excuses so much racist behavior that people don't even know they're doing it. And then when they're confronted with it, they feel ashamed and they freak out. Don't feel ashamed. Feel empowered. Feel empowered that you can be educated and that you can stop doing this shit. Okay, let's get to work. Godspeed. What do you guys think about this lady's video? It was so funny when she was warning them not to scroll, to just wait and listen and hear this particular one just the same way they pick interest in conversation that is not about them. What do you think about our video? Let me hear what you guys think about our video in the comment section. Like I said earlier, there were so many people using situations of some celebrities to make a clear example of what this woman is trying to say. And there are so many people in the comment section as well agreeing to what this lady was saying this person said kayla nicole and travis kelsey i know they broke up but the eight she gets is very crazy it was still very crazy because they think that one of their own spot was taken from them another person said literally the bridgeton fandom right now so many lost their mind when they thought Masali Aduza was going to play Sophie. Like they could not stand the idea of it. They couldn't stand the fact that it was this person that would probably play the role of Sophie. Another person said, The amount of women that have approached my man thinking we are not together because we just couldn't be. Unfortunately for them, he is the main one. And that is on the man standing for their woman. What do they even mean when they think that a particular lady cannot be with a certain man? This is actually very funny and I love the fact that this lady pointed it out that he is the main one. So definitely he's the one throwing their shade back to their faces. Another one said, in the Latin world, when she sees a white Latino attracted to a darker skin, she will badmouth her and slut shame her to the guy. But it has the opposite effect on making him intrigued. I hope they will understand this. And this particular comment is not even about Latino or darker person. I get where this person is coming from. But it goes the other way around too because there are some women who will literally badmouth um, the other woman because a man that they probably like has picked interest in the woman so it works this way too i really really love this another person said i had a girl in college suggest that my fiance boyfriend at the time was trying to make someone jealous or rebelling by dating me i love the fact that the relationship has progressed because this lady said my fiance boyfriend at the time so definitely they had together that is so good and i hope she's somewhere literally watching the progress another person said they do this in the workforce as well if you are better at something or promoted they are awful and passive aggressive towards you i cannot even start to name the number of videos that i have seen on tiktok literally addressing this particular one like so many people have been out talking about their experience very similar to this another one said i had to point out these observations to my husband shortly before we got married he's now super aware of microaggressions in my direction as you should man last one i have here said she said i definitely have a main character syndrome and i have known that about myself for a long time and i have had the mentality my whole life but my only sense of happiness and what comes from the feeling like the hemp like thank god that you are aware that you have that main character syndrome is very very common amongst you people because the world makes them feel like they are the standard so let me hear what you guys think about this video let me hear your take on this comment as well let's continue this conversation in the comment section and i will catch you guys in the next one